Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Beth and today we are continuing on with our discussion of beloved children's book authors by discussing a couple that came together in tribulous times in the world and were able to create something beautiful and someone who we love very, very much in this household and who my bank account loves is Margaret and H.A. Ray. This is just a small smattering of the books that we have by them and the movies based off of those books. They, of course, wrote Curious George. So we have all of these that my daughter loves to read. But the book that I like the best and that really encouraged me to start this series of videos to begin with is a picture book biography, The Journey That Saved Curious George, The True Wartime Escape of Margaret and H.A. Ray by Louise Borden and illustrated by Alan Drummond. Without further ado, let's get curious. You never do know what's around a bit. Big adventure, oh, Brandon Brand, what you do here? I like you, you know, swag! Hamburg, Germany is known as being the second largest German city and one of the largest ports in Europe. In 1906, Hans Augusto Reiersbeck turned eight years old, he was growing up in Hamburg, Germany, and enjoyed watching the boats coming through the port city with its canals and thousands of bridges. He loved to visit the Hagenbeck Zoo with his brother and two sisters. He learned to imitate the sounds of the animals. He also loved to go to the circus and visit the horses in the bright colors. He loved to draw pictures and paint. He was very good at it. Later in school, Hans studied Latin, Greek, French, and English. He could speak five languages, including German. Here we see an image painted by Hans Augusto in 1906 when he was eight years old. This is his view of Hamburg. That same year that Hans Augusto Reiersbeck was enjoying being an eight-year-old, Marguerite Elizabeth Waldstein was born in Hamburg. Like the Ryersbecks, the Waldsteins were Jewish and enjoyed a good life full of books and photography and just comfort and culture. Marguerite went on to study at the famous Bauhaus Art School in Germany. When World War I began, Hans signed up in Kaiser Wilhelm's German army. He hated being a soldier and he hated war, but he still loved to draw and he loved to laugh, so he would make silly sketches for his fellow soldiers. On clear nights, he studied the stars and the constellations. He was always very curious about the world. He learned a smattering of Russian while on the front. Hans remained interested in science, especially in astronomy. He was an amateur astronomer his entire life and even wrote a book entitled the stars, a new way to see them. In 1918, Germany lost the war and Hans Reierbeck was a 20 year old looking for something to do. He went home and attended university for a few years. Then he decided to go to Brazil. So he packed his sketchbooks and did just that. By 1924, Hans was fluent in yet another language, Portuguese. He also had a job selling bathtubs and kitchen sinks up and down the Amazon River where he could see the monkeys high above him chattering away at each other in the trees. When Hitler came to power in Germany and began making things difficult for the Jews, Marguerite Waldstein left Hamburg and went to work as a photographer in London. Then in 1935, she decided to travel along the ocean to Rio de Janeiro. She was looking for a new adventure, new work, and an old family friend, Hans Reiersbeck. The two began to work together, sharing their talent both enjoying writing and drawing and animals. They were married that August. Hans was known as the quiet, gentle one, and Marguerite, with red hair and artist spunk, was never afraid to speak her mind. They worked together, lived together in a Rio apartment, and together had two pet marmosets that were always curious and in getting into mischief. Marguerite decided to shorten her name to Margaret, Brazilians had a difficult time saying Ryers back, so they shortened it to Ray. And Hans Augusto was trying to get work as an artist and shortened his to the initials H.A., which were much easier to say and remember. 
A few months later, they decide to go on their long-awaited honeymoon, taking a wet, cold passage to England. They visit several cities and wind up in Paris. They were planning to stay at the Hotel Terrace for two weeks. The Terrace Hotel was in Montmartre, the neighborhood of Paris that was famous for all of the artistic types that lived there. Rays decided this was just the perfect neighborhood for them, and so the Terrace Hotel became their home for the next four years. At that time, the Terrace had two buildings, one with guest rooms and one with apartments. The Rays moved in to apartment number 505 with two French turtles. While living in Paris, A.J. Ray was publishing little cartoons of a giraffe in local papers, and a Paris publisher saw the cartoons and then asked for him to expand them into a book, which is how H.A. and Margaret Ray's first book, Cecily G. and the Nine Monkeys, or Raffi and the Monkeys, as it was known in Paris, became published. In that book, we are introduced to a small monkey that is known as Fifi, but who becomes George in the American version, and that is how Curious George got his own start. Near to the beginning of World War II, before having to flee Paris, they spent four months in a chateau in the Pyrenees Mountains working on two important stories. One was Black White, the penguin who loved to go on adventures, and the other was the marvelous adventures of Fifi, who later became Curious George. Unfortunately, Hitler and his Nazis were close to taking over Paris, and so finding only one tandem bicycle and many broken parts, Hans cobbled together two bicycles, and early on June 14, 1940, the Rays set off on their bikes. They only brought with them warm coats, some food, and five manuscripts, including the very first Curious George book. Hours later, Nazis entered Paris, but the Rays were already long gone. They rode four days until reaching the French-Spanish border, then sold their bicycles for train fare to Lisbon. They went from Lisbon to Brazil and from Brazil to New York, where Curious George was published by Houghton Mifflin in 1941. The Rays went on to write and illustrate seven original Curious George books in the past 75 years, he has been so popular that his original story has never once been taken out of print. And all of the stories, including the seven originals by the Rays, have sold over 25 million copies. He is one of the most famous and most beloved children's book icons across the entire world. It is said that Hans and Margaret were able to see inside the child and create a character that incorporates all of what children would like to do if they were not going to get in trouble for it. Though Hans passed away in 1977 and Margaret followed in 1996, the Curious George Foundation carries on their love of sharing such wonderful things as curiosity, ingenuity, and learning with children across the world never lost their love of animals and this foundation makes sure to give preference to programs that aid animals as well. We must never forget that George had his start because two German Jews went to Brazil. Now I'm going to leave you with a few of my favorite interesting little factoids about Curious George. For 65 years George's friend was only known as the man George's friend or the man in the yellow hat. It was not until the full-length animated feature Curious George came out in 2006 that the man was given a first name. And in order to give him that name, they went back and looked at H.A. Ray's old artwork, finding a man watching a circus that looked like he had the same kind of hat on his head as George's friend. And the caption read, Ted enjoys the circus, so they named him Ted. Universal Studios also gave Ted a last name. It's Shackelford, 
and they gave him a girlfriend who is a teacher. Neither of those things show up in the original stories. Over the past 75 years, Curious George and his friend have had many, many adventures, including being animated for Scholastic short videos in the 80s, and in 2006, gaining his own television show on PBS Kids. However, if you will notice in the original stories and the new animations, there is a huge change. The man in the yellow hat originally drove a blue convertible and not the yellow one he happily drives today. Finally, we come to my favorite fact about Curious George. This book-loving, science-loving monkey lives on Avenue A, which means he is part of Alphabet City. I really uh, had a lot of fun researching this and learning so much really cool information about Hans and Marguerite, and I just had a blast putting it together for you guys. I'm going to leave several links down below. If you have any more children's book authors that you would like to have me research and put together a video like this for, I would be more than happy to. Please contact me. I have a list down below of places you can find me or just leave me a comment on here. I can't wait to see who you guys suggest for me to go out and start learning about. There's so many amazing authors that have so many wonderful stories to share. And I just can't wait to find out what those backgrounds are and share them with you, my friends. So leave me comments down below. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe if you're new and, you know, stay curious. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.